It was boredom at first sight You could hardly call him right He is no one's Mr. Right So what do I see in it? doing? Just doing my nails. <laughs> Did you have a good sleep? Oh, I wasn't asleep. I just had my eyes closed. Oh, I thought you were. How is she? Oh, she's all right. She's a bit disappointed in you, though. She thought you were going to tell her a story or a few jokes. I didn't think my jokes would suit her. Oh, I think they would. She's nearly nine months now. She gave me a lovely smile earlier. It's probably wind. <laughs> she does think you're funny, though. She says you're reminded of Coco. Suppose I could tell her my joke about tiger spotting. Yeah, there's no need to. She's already asleep. You could tell me again, though. I might find it funny now you're dressed for the part. <laughs> me? Nothing. Oh, that nail varnish stinks a bit, doesn't it? It's a new brand. It's called Nose Glow. Oh, sorry, Rose Glow. <laughs> Used to brighten up your extremities. Oh, no, what are they doing back? Oh, yeah, I wanted to watch the news. Great. Hi. Hi. Hello, Early. How was she? Who? Sarah, is she asleep? <laughs> oh, no, Malcolm, you. We were here for some reason. Remember that scream we heard before? Brenda. Of course she is. Don't go away for now. I'll just peep in. Everything all right? Great. <laughs> You're back, Ellie. Pop shut. It was a dinner. We didn't stay for the after-do. Pam gets anxious. She doesn't trust us. That's a trouble. She must have found out what happened last time. And you only dropped her the once. <laughs> you joke about these things. <laughs> so, nothing, nothing. You just look a bit pale. He's just woke up. I was not asleep. Sorry. Oh, she's well away. You all right, Mal? Yeah, fine, uh, why, Josh? Nothing. He's just woken up. I have not. Sorry. But when you do, give us a shout, eh? Uh, Brian, one thing I forgot to mention. Provided the room temperature is above 65, I always put the top window on the second notch. Ah, oh, well, that wasn't on your list. At least I don't think so. Let's have a look. Uh, teats, sterilising times, cotton buds the disposal of. No, not near about windows. Oh, hang on, is this it? Before touching the infant, the babysitter should bath in neat Dettol and drip dry out the window. <laughs> this is sheer food. Thinking of getting new garage doors? Yeah, send off a few details. I rather fancy the remote control. <laughs> Trouble is, there's no power out there. What's <laughs> funny? Nothing. Brenda. Oh, don't do that. You look lovely. <laughs> you go out leaving one baby and you come back to three. Did you enjoy your sleep, Mum? I was not. <laughs> He was telling us jokes before, so I dressed him for the part. No, there were these tigers on the oh, TV. Oh, not now, eh, hey, Malk? <laughs> Come on, let's leave these two to play mummies and daddies. Still time for you to force a double vodka and lime down my throat, but go easy on the lime, eh? Well, I might have just dropped off, just for a couple of seconds. Ah, right, yeah, 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 thank yeah. you. I like that house. <laughs> it's all right. Lovely spot. So peaceful. Yeah, it's great. Get into hibernation. I have half a shandy and a vodka and lime, please, Harold. Right, that's one. And they got the best of both worlds, because they'd be in town in half an hour. Yeah, but they won't. They'll spend the next 50 years fading into the wallpaper. Depressing it is. It should be life after marriage, you know. It's just different tastes. They're happy with the new house from Sarah. One pound forty. There you go. Three sinks. What? Who needs three sinks? And the middle one's full of holes. The straining vegetables. Training them to do what? Straining vegetables. <laughs> Turning into them more like. Those two used to go out to theatres and clubs and things. Do you know, they've only been out twice since they moved to that place. Yeah, but it's their choice. 
Yeah, well, that's what's so depressing. Sitting in every night with the fluffy slippers and cocoa. Sorry, nothing personal. <laughs> what do you mean? Nothing. Oh, oh, don't go falling asleep on me. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got too much on at the moment. You're not kidding. We don't do much better than the rusting robots we've just left. We had a nice afternoon out in Helbury Island. Oh, yeah, looking for the black red start that had left two months previous. I picked up an old news sheet. And last Saturday we went to see a movie that was so bad you wanted to sue Barry Norman. I'd miss her, did <laughs> Which one were we meant to see and when do we see it? It's difficult. No, it isn't. You pay your money at the door and they let you sit and watch it. <laughs> the thing is, I'm getting plenty of repair work, but I seem to spend half of every day queuing up for spares. So I have to work evenings. So how long will this go on? I don't know. I'll, I'll think of something. Well, you better get a move on. You're fed up for staying at home. It certainly makes you appreciate what life was like in the flat with Pam before she caught marriage. You should be able to get vaccinated against it. <laughs> I thought you had been. What about your Sandra? You'd talked to moving in with her. No, nah, it wouldn't have worked. She's lazy and untidy and disorganised. Yeah, I suppose you can't have two like that in one flat, can you? Well, that's a good one, Malk. That'll cost you a drink. It wasn't bad, was it? I was trying to slip it Drink. <laughs> but as a vodka in there, I'll another half of shandy. You want to go easy, you know? This stuff's having an effect on you. Hello? Oh, you're home. Well, you'll have to make your own supper. I've had mine. Yes, all right. Any phone calls? Only five. Two, why isn't it ready? Two, I must have it ready for the weekend. And an urgent request from Auntie Peggy. Not wheelchair problem. Afraid so. Apparently she hid a lamppost when avoiding the byproduct of a neighbour's Alsatian. <laughs> she goes too fast, I've told her. Yes, well. Seems the chair's in a bad way this time. Thing is, did they recover the black box? <laughs> I see your idea of humour continues its downward spiral. <sighs> Actually, I got Brenda with a good one this evening. Are you watching this wildlife film on BBC Two? Or was it Channel Four? Anyway, it started at half seven. And I said to her, Do you know the best way to go tiger spotting? Oh, that's what it was about in India. It's, it's like bird watching, but with tigers. I would never have guessed. <laughs> And she says, no, what is the best way to go tiger spotting? And I said, with a friend who can't run. <laughs> <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Actually, it's not original. I think I read it somewhere, but I think it was a, a crocodile. You go with a crocodile that can't run? <laughs> oh, it's a friend who can't run. Well, that's terrible. And you've just been reminded of that because of Auntie Peggy. <laughs> no, I well, I'm sorry, Malcolm. I think that was in very poor taste. It was not funny. And he doesn't make it for you wearing that silly nose. <laughs> Brenda. Brilliant. You just go, and it opens automatically. Brilliant and beautiful. Yeah, very smart. And something Lawrence hasn't got. No, but Kate says they're still trying. <laughs> Can you not go to Peggy's this afternoon, then? I've got three bikes. I must get shut off today. I'll go this evening, if I finish in time. Now, if you had a proper business, there'd be no if about it. Proper business? Yes. You should employ people. Get them to twiddle with the engines and things. And you could wear a suit and have clean fingernails. Great. The only flaw with that is these people might decide they want pain now and again. Oh, isn't that just you all over? You give in before you even thought about it. To start with, you just get one. Twiddler. Assistant. <laughs> well, look, the business is healthy, but I don't make enough to pay a trained mechanic. Anyway, it's very specialised. Well, get a boy, an apprentice. He learns at Nellie's elbow. Nellie's elbow? It's an expression. <laughs> Who's Nellie? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't want to put an ad on the table, why not contact the job centre? Give them details and they'll send people along. What, you mean I sort of interview them? Not sort of. You interview them. Trouble is, I, I wouldn't want to turn anyone down. You don't have to. You just say, we'll let you know. Then you forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't do that. I think that's despicable. I mean, what sort of employer would be so, so cruel, so, so unfeeling, so arrogant as not even let an applicant know what's happened? <laughs> yeah, well, we were talking about garage doors, weren't we? 
But we had intended getting the 1.2, but then we realised for another £70 we could get the 1.6. And it has electronic touch control pads and a multi-sequence cooking facility. Oh, right, because if you don't cook them properly, those multi-sequences taste awful. <laughs> and this model can take a 6.8 kilogram turkey. Oh, well, say no more. Though, of course, it wouldn't be able to turn round. Well, they don't push <laughs> when they're dead. On the turntable. But that's not essential, because in addition, it has a rotating antenna. What a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is very handy. A temperature probe. You wouldn't want to run a fever in this house. <laughs> Yeah, well, it shouldn't be a problem getting electricity to your garage, because your, your meter cupboard's in the hall. Actually, the meter cupboard's on the inside wall. Well, it's all right. You can run it over the door frame, and next time you decorate, you can uh, channel the plaster and sink it. Right, yes, of course. Sink it. Sink what? <laughs> Cable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. I, I know you're pretty frantic at the moment, Malcolm, but do you think you could do a job like that? Now, you know me, Bren, I just hate housework. So when David suggested Venetian blinds for the kitchen, I said, no way. They're just held to clean. But then I have to admit, with the kitchen having a southwest aspect, the sun is a problem. So what did David do? He had it turned off at the mains. <laughs> he bought me one of these. Dirty devil! Just four blades at a time. Wow, Mal, come and have a look at this. Just four blades at a time. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. Well, you know what they say. If it wasn't for Venetian blinds, it'd be curtains for all of us. <laughs> And uh, this is the uh, exhaust gas analyzer. Three things are a little bit cramped here at the moment, but uh, please don't touch that. But I've got a number of machines that are waiting on spare parts now, and uh, don't. I think we'll, uh, we'll we'll start the interviews now, if, if that's all right with you. If you wouldn't mind um, waiting outside, I'll call you, see you one at a time, if that's all right. <laughs> I'm busy. You're interviewing? Well, that's right. I thought so. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I didn't think you wanted the job. Don't. <laughs> you need someone to help you. Otherwise, there's no knowing who you might take on. I can manage. I don't need any help. Thank you. Is that them outside? Yes. <laughs> you need help. I do not. It's better with two. Look, if I thought I needed a second opinion, I'd have asked Brenda to sit in. Her? What use would she be? Well, she'd spot any dicey ones. She's a very good judge of character. Judge of character. She couldn't spot a lemon in an orange sucking competition. <laughs> All your life, you've been taken in by layabouts. But we may see it doesn't happen again. What do you mean? Look, I won't say anything. I'll just sit here quietly and observe. Hey, you better have that. Uh, mother. Don't argue. <clears throat> Come. <laughs> If the valve springs are closed together at one end, that end goes next to the head. Very good. Then you give the valves a tap with a light hammer to ensure the split collet seat properly. That's fine. In just a moment. Tell me, Miss, uh, Ms. Lyndon. Quail Street. Is that council property? Mother, you don't need to answer that. <laughs> They're flats. Thank you. We'd just like to get a bit of background. Y well, I think that'll be all for the moment. Can I ask a couple of questions? Certainly. Have the premises been checked by a factories inspector lately? What? Well, I, I don't think we come under the... Uh, uh, well, as I don't employ any uh, 
Well, if I do, then they will, because they must. It's just that I noticed that the fire extinguisher's CO2 and it should be a foam type, and there's no sign of an asbestos blanket. Yeah, yes, I have been meaning... Is that the dry cleaners? <laughs> <laughs> Can I send the next one in? Please. <laughs> so, why are the jaws of the spanner at an angle? to the shank. Uh, it's the way they're made. <laughs> it's not the way they're made. Uh, how would you tighten this nut? Clockwise. Y yes, I know you turn it clockwise. How would you hold the spanner? Uh, at the end. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yes, if, if you just wouldn't mind uh, waiting outside, Mr Cameron. Is there anything you'd like to ask us? Well, no, not really. Except... I would like to express my appreciation for a very fair interview, Mr. and Mrs. Stoneway. Well, it... <laughs> no, actually, I'm Mr. Stoneway's mother. No! I'm yeah. oh, sorry. It's just that, um, well, you don't look old enough. Oh. <laughs> what a pleasant young man. And Cameron's a good Scottish name. And so what? But they're good engineers, the Scots. Well, I asked him six questions and he waffled on all of them. But they were such silly questions. What's it matter which way up you hold a spatter as long as you turn it the right way? <laughs> well, actually, it matters a great... I don't know what I'm arguing with you for. Precisely. Call him back in. Well, I'll have to tell her first. Tell her what? She's got the job. A girl? Working here with you? She was good. You can't have a girl working here. But why not? Oh, because it might upset Brenda, you mean. What? I hadn't thought of that. Still, mustn't discriminate, must we? So, I went to the door to offer her the job, and guess what? She'd gone. What, she'd gone? Yeah, she'd gone, that's right. Had the other fella gone and all? Yeah, how did you know? He guessed. So he was left standing there all on his own, was he, Mr Cunning One? Uh, Cameron, Chris Cameron. So you decided you had to offer him the job? Yeah, that's right. Well done, him. I suppose she was put off by the fire extinguisher. I doubt it. But your mum was pleased, though. Yeah, she was. She said he can have his lunch at ours. Did she just? What does he look like? Oh, I don't know, just sort of ordinary. I'll tell you what. I've got to go to our pants tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll call on me way. Call where? To yours for lunch. Oh, right. Okay, thanks for asking. See, things are better already. Of course, Heswell is a very select part of the Wirral. Do your sister feel at home there, does she? Not off. You'd think she'd been a plastic no more her life. She polishes the bath plug, makes rhubarb wine, and knits her own curtains. She doesn't. She does. Proper Miss Dolly domestic she is these days. No one would ever believe she used to drink bitter for Lancashire. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Stoneway. Uh, oh, right. Enjoy it, did you? It was delicious. Just a moussaka, but with a little elaboration of my own. Yeah, the bit of privet on top. <laughs> Beef. Do you think I could have the recipe for me mum? Why, are you going to cook her? By all means, Christopher. Is she good cook? Oh, great. Well, you know, she's professional-like. She does Tuesdays and Fridays at our chippy. Oh, yes. Well, your parents have a chip shop, do they? No. Uh, our chippy, the one near us. Oh, I see. Well, what does your father do, actually? Well, home improvements, you know, rewiring, loft insulation, cut price home security. Well, burglar alarms. Well, sort of. He sells you this box full of tarantulas. <laughs> And before you go out, you just let them loose in your hall. Why? And when you come back, how do you get them back in the box? You just call them. They've all got names. Oh, right. <laughs> but he has a trade, though, has he? Yeah, yeah, he sparks. Sparks? Well, but only if you scratch his flint. <laughs> oh. So did you work with him, then? Yeah, when I was a kid, he'd take me on rewiring jobs. To learn at Nelly's elbow. What, no, to crawl under the floorboards? <laughs> to chimney sweeping? Uh, you are okay with electrics, though. Oh, Brill. Only yesterday I fixed me mum's torch. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of mains electrics. What, you mean plugs and fuses and that? Yeah, no sweat. Ah, well. 
perhaps you can take a look at my twin temperature croissant warmer. <laughs> Malcolm's been promising to fix it for over a year now. Yeah, yeah, you could do, but then after you could go to Brenda's sister's because they want power in the garage. Now you need about eight metres of cable and you can pick the drill up from the workshop. Yeah, yeah, but it, it depends where the, um... You know, right, the, no, uh... no, I'll give you directions. Yeah, but I, I it's don't... It's right, I'll hang on here till you've done that, then I'll take you. Great, right, well, I'll see you later, about five. See you, Brent. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Nine foot six, okay. Have you ever done anything like this before? Of course I have. Well, similar. Like what? I plumbed in my nan's washing machine. What, successfully? Half, I, I got the pumping end bit right. It was just when it pumped out. I flooded the kitchen. <laughs> Two kitchens, actually, she lived in a flat. <laughs> oh, I thought she was asleep. No, nah, she's been listening. Yeah. All right. She says she's never heard such a pile of rubbish in her life. It's true, all of it. Yeah. I'll tell him. She said if it is true, you better not go fitting any electric points in the garage or anywhere else. Yeah, I suppose she's right. How old? Nine months. She's a good talker. Her dad's a budgie. <laughs> what do? Well, I think I might only manage to run the wire through. Malcolm might turn up just in time to make the connections. Sarah says that's very wise. Oh, she's a bright kid. Runs in the family. Her mum could hold an intelligent conversation when she was nine months. Only she seems to have lost the knack now she's got married. Is there anything on the telly? Yeah, that's pushing it a bit, isn't it? I mean, Mac did give you the drill and the wire and all that. Yeah, but he said to drill from the garage to avoid making a mess in the hall. So? Well, there's no power point in the garage. Ah, no, that's clever. I thought so. I'll put some dust sheets down in the hall. Oh, no, I wouldn't want you to bother. Because there's no need to, is there? None at all. Because if you look in the cupboard under the stairs, there's an extension lead. Oh, there's not, is there? I'm afraid so. How's it going? <sighs> Nearly. Right, it's Brenda inside, is she? Yeah. Hi. How's Sarah? She's all right. She didn't like the noise, so I've put her down the bottom of the garden. In pram? No, under a pile of leaves. <laughs> He's nearly through, taking bets with the exit. Oh, he will. I helped him measure it. Nine foot six in the door, six foot six up. Plus the steps. Hey. Plus, the steps were higher than... <laughs> so what did your sister have to say? Oh, it was all right. Malcolm explained to me that it was all his fault, so she just broke his collarbone. <laughs> but I healed quickly. No, it wasn't as bad as all that. David said he wasn't very keen on that picture anyway. And our Pam says with the hole in the wall, she can see what he's up to when he's in the garage. <laughs> and Christopher? He had to go home early. Said something about his grandmother's washing machine. Yes, well, I'm sure he does his best. At least he fixed this. Make me laugh. 